Yo dog, we heard you like to while you so we put some inside your so that you can while you're booming dog. Boom. What? Huh? I said boom. Big red barrel 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 boom. Hey everyone, it's us. Hey, dog side. Boom. Oh man, I did it again. Boom. Manly boom. I wanted to say last week we neglected to make a comment about how in the right light when you made that noise, it sounded like you were doing the um, the Death Star prep to fire on Alderaan noise. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Shouldn't they put up a railing here? <laughs> uh, stop stealing robot chicken jokes. That's awful. Um, <laughs> isn't that from Robot Chicken? I think it's the Family Guy. Or maybe family guy. Whatever. Yeah. Stop stealing jokes from both of those shows. Actually, if you're gonna steal jokes, steal it from Family Guy because that show's funnier. Yeah, steal okay. harder from Family Guy. Yeah, <laughs> you steal so hard, dog. <laughs> I mean, cause, cause, really, come on. Let's be honest with ourselves. Robot Chicken like has like one out of every fifteen skits are funny, and the rest are just like, mm, yeah, wow, I can really? get behind that. Perfect yeah. for stealing. Well, though. that's a good point. Their Star yeah. Wars stuff is funnier than their other stuff. I think we've talked about that before. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm Dogsty, and it's great to be with you, everybody. Uh, I want to introduce my two hosts. We have two of them. They're Yoshi Fett, and they are Smelly Pirate. <laughs> Say hello to the fine folks, Smelly Pirate. We are smelly pirate, for we are many. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You are legion, is what you are. I am legion, (laughs) I am smelly. I'm going to send you into a herd of pigs, or I can't remember, swine, and send you over the cliff, I I think, maybe? I will send you over the cliff like a herd of swine. Do swine travel in herds? They do now. I I think it's a murder of swine. (laughs) (laughs) Everything we don't know is just a murder of because that's the coolest sounding one. That's like that's like the next that's the next big like young adult book craze. I think it's going to be the murder of swine (laughs) series. Uh, (laughs) I have a quick question. Um, Sure. Ender's Game, Hunger Games. Which one? Ender's Ender's, Ender's Game. Are you stupid? Ender's Ender's Ender's. I'm not stupid. It's just that I'm kind of caught up in the 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 hunger game thing right now the hunger game buzz uh, well no just actually reading the book i I like it a lot and i was thinking about that today no wait so your argument for why you're not stupid actually just shows why you're more stupid because you (laughs) said wait no 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 no, no, hold on no i'm i'm reading hunger games and i'm asking if it's better than ender's game no that's why you're stupid i was asking your opinion it's a good point I didn't know your opinion was stupid, but, you know, if you want to go with that, that's fine. <laughs> if you have to question it, it's it's pretty dumb. Ender's Game's phenomenal. Okay. I'm just starting off with a little bit of controversy. Well, no, that's totally. Uh, but it would be interesting to see if, you know, that's based more on the fact that we all read Ender's Game when we were younger. and there Not was... true. I read Ender's Game about three years ago. For, for the, the first, first time? time? Are you serious? Now who's dumb? What, what kind of Mormon are you? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Dude, Orson Scott Card is rolling over Jeez. in his grave right yeah. now. Yeah, next you're going to tell me you don't watch Glenn Beck every night. What's going on? <laughs> I listen to him when I'm driving to work. Does that count? <laughs> yeah, that counts. But, but only for humor, right? I'm, I'm assuming there's some irony there. Man, I've been, lis- I've been listening to Rush lately, and that guy is hilarious. I know. Well, misogyny is funny, so, you know. It's classic. <laughs> it's classic man too. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's a smelly pirate. Do you have anything else you'd like to say? <laughs> yeah. Meaning anything at all? <laughs> we can talk during Yoshi's introduction. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> do I have anything video game related? Not that we won't talk about later in the show. I'm really happy today, guys. I discovered a new good. passion of mine, which I, I've known for some time that I'm passionate, but not like consciously, explicitly known that this is a passion of mine. I am just hopelessly engaged and entertained and enthralled by race and culture. I love it. Really? Yes. So, like rap music, for example. <laughs> you don't say, Mr. Uh, Thug Speak of <laughs> the Week, Thug that Thug you're Thug. interested in, in culture, different cultures? Yeah. <laughs> no, but I realized today that it's a real, Shocker. like, a, it's a deeply intellectual and spiritual uh, excitement about race and culture. Not just like a superficial, oh, thugs are funny because they say dumb words. 
It's not like my weird attraction to Asians while I was in the dorms. No, no, it's not. Or you're freaky. that happens to everybody who goes to UCLA. That's yeah. just that's a rite of passage. <laughs> well, there's not many other races to choose from there. Exactly. Uh, there are white girls. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I just I, I don't need to, we don't need to get into big uh, philosophical discussion. But I really today, sort of in a conversation at work, discovered that I am passionately interested in race and culture, and it's exciting Good. to be that excited about something. <laughs> well, I'm happy. Let's let everyone speculate why you decided to use that today. That will just that's good. Uh huh. Yoshi. Um, Smelly, have you, have you read? I know why the caged bird sings. Because if you haven't, then you're not really fully engaged with the racial discussion. I don't like Mark Twain. So <laughs> what's better? What's better, that book or or Hunger Games? <laughs> Hunger Games. Well, Hunger Hung- Games. Uh, well, you know, in in terms of discussing race, obviously Hunger Games. But I read The Invisible Man. I've got some cred there. Right? That's true. No, it, it's funny that you say that because that is a, a big part of of the whole you know study of literature and uh often one of our big topics is is this racist you know as as the tosh.0 skit puts it where you you're uh-huh. trying to figure out whether things are racist but not in a kind of like you said superficial thugs are funny because they say it's like here's a whole like way of thinking and a whole communication system that you have to look at as being like part of a culture and almost part of like a modern tribe so to speak uh-huh. and that th- that goes for all races you know yeah. like like the people I'm around, they're part of my tribe, so to speak, and the the certain words that they use and the way that they present themselves, etc. That's all part of like a cultural thing. So I'm I'm totally with you. It's super interesting, and the thing I think the reason why it's so interesting is because there's no end to it. There's no bottom. Like you're never gonna like figure it out and be like, no, right. I got it all down. It's like you can debate this for your whole life, and it will be uh, fascinating forever. So. Yeah. What a weird turn for our show to take. <laughs> and I'm Dog's Die. <laughs> um, now, Yoshi, you got anything uh, that people want to hear about? Uh, coming from me, very rarely, but uh, they're forced to hear about stuff from me. Uh, n- uh, not really. I mean, we'll get into most of the games that I've been playing anyways when we talk about our main game. So I'll just Sweet. save it for that. Well, um, I can say that. So tomorrow I turn 30, right? And to surprise me You're right. for my birthday, thank you, um, to surprise me for my birthday, my wife threw me a party before my birthday, which works every time I hear. Um, sneaky, and sneaky. her big gift for me, Yoshi, you would be happy to hear, June 1st and June 2nd, I'm going to Colorado to see the Rockies versus the Dodgers. Nice. Whoop, whoop. I can't wait. That's awesome. It's going to be a lot of fun. I wonder if Magic's going to be there. <laughs> But, uh, you know, we want to get to the video games, and so that's what we're going to do, people. We like those. So on this week of the boom, we have a a little bit of a, maybe the first mobile blockbuster. We got to talk some MLB The Show, uh, some complaints, surprisingly, Uh, Mass Effect 3, and other topics that have been for the last four weeks on this episode (laughs) of (laughs) Boom. All right, Yoshi, why don't you teach us a word so we become wiser and smarter? Like you. Uh, I don't think that that's true because, you know, the, the the truth behind all of this is is that I, I look up these words like moments before the show starts usually. <laughs> and we don't remember any of them moments no, after you say No, but them. I like throwing them out there. And then I thought this one was interesting. It's Bruxism. Oh. Not to be confused with Marxism or any of those other isms, but Bruxism. The The... the, the the definition oh. is totally fascinating. Um, and we have to wait 35 minutes. I to know, to find out. But just think Bruxism, you know, is a, it's a cool word. It's a cool sounding word. It makes you feel smart when you say Bruxism, but it, it, it's a, got an interesting definition. And you guys will probably maybe try and use it once, and that'll be cool. So, yeah, there you go, Bruxism. Bruxism, great. How about, your th- how about the thuggy thugs? Yeah, thug this week comes from uh, a patient on the unit, on the acute unit of our hospital, um, who, after speaking with him for a good 15 or 20 minutes individually, he said something along the lines of, well, it's, you know, it's been great for us to, uh, to, uh, kick the bobo. 
<laughs> and and you know from context i gleaned that he meant um sit around and shoot the crap or talk or you know discuss casually and that's what it means you kick the bolo oh. so i thought it was like you know if you're a woman you get attacked by a man in a dark corner you got to kick him in the bobo all right right no no surprisingly it's not that oh okay that wouldn't make any sense in the context of the story he just told us by the way <laughs> you're really bad at context clues dogs no. dog. just throwing that out there yeah well you know we all have our that's why you didn't graduate high school but <laughs> yeah wait no you true. did graduate high school and you had dates with katie perry i'm so jealous of you yeah that's true your dates with katie perry on the mac chair Mm-hmm. Both, yeah, I pretty. Sh- I yeah, I got. She got me pregnant. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> that's what that song "Firework" is about. Yeah, <laughs> yep. Somehow, <laughs> baby, you're a firework, oh, a dude, but your uterus works. I think. <laughs> Look, okay. you're doing a musical on the spot. This is amazing. Real time musical making. <laughs> Musicals dot com. Hey, we hit uh, f- we hit four page views last month. <laughs> anyway, um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mor- morbid curiosity from Brown Show. Oh, Boom Show listeners. Oh, crap. I said no. it. Oh, shnikes. <laughs> that's like, that's a whammy whenever you do that. Like, something bad should happen to me for saying that. Yeah, green slime is going to fall on your head. Everyone, we're not going to have an MMO speak this week because I've decided I hate MMOs. Good. Until, Gear- until Guild Wars 2 comes out, and then we'll, we'll bring it up again. Give us, a, give, us a, give us a the show speak of the week. That'd be good. Of the show speak? <laughs> um, hey, t- tell them about the, the picture I sent you today. <laughs> oh, yeah. So Yoshi sent me a picture at work. And I got to be honest, Yoshi, I miss getting show pictures from you. Yeah, because I used to do this like two years ago when I first got it. I would always send you pictures of like what, what my uh, what my player road to the show player was yeah, up to. I did this. I did the same thing. It was it's awesome. We need to, we need to we need to keep, keep doing what that. What was my accomplishment this time? His accomplishment today was a ten game hitting Woo! streak, which, which <laughs> is very good. Yeah, it's very good. You, I, I have to tell you that my batting average during that streak was something around like two seventy. So I was actually only really getting one hit per game. And it was like, That's funny. I was just barely hanging on. And then right after I sent you that text, I went 0 for 4, and my streak was <laughs> over. But I thought, oh, I remember Dogs Die saying that he, he liked those pictures. It was like a cool form of communication back and forth, and a way for us to brag to each other about what we're doing in our video game. I most, I most definitely do. Yeah, mo- most deaf, uh, man. Not, most I agree. deaf. By the way, um, it, I didn't realize until about six months ago that most deaf the rapper meant it was short for most definitely really is that that is just really ignorant and stupid isn't it it's just a typical white man bruxism i don't know yeah it is when you're not passionate about race and culture the way you should be (laughs) sometimes you miss some of the finer points yeah that's true um that reminds me of a joke of of the stand-up artist that i listen to and i won't sing it because it isn't a song but he says um, you know, I have this black friend, but I don't know what to call him. So I call him Jamal, even though his name is Steve. <laughs> <laughs> when it's sung, it's a lot funnier. It's, but you know, it's not possible. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. Be. Well, I, t- anyway, um, I, I think I mentioned this on the show, maybe, but I still need to bring it up. But uh, my my racist habit of naming my baseball players weird names <laughs> that usually start with de- Day, and I named a player DeQuil Jackson, and then that turned out to be a real NFL player <laughs> later, <laughs> like a year later. A guy named DeQuil came oh out, and I was like, gosh. "Are you serious? I totally made up that name based on the word DayQuil." And <laughs> 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 what an awfully racist thing for me to do. But uh, oh wow. well, what are you gonna do? How dare you? I know. Times. What a stereotype black people in Dayquil. Except for that it's a real guy, so I don't feel as bad. Once he was a real human, I was like, oh, well, then, yeah, I'm just using a name that's commonly used. <laughs> I'm no more racist than his mother. <laughs> <laughs> right? <sighs> yeah. yeah. So, um, now, looking back at mobile gaming, um, there's been, especially recently with the iPhone in the last, you know, six, five, six years, there's been kind of one game will be the the big hotness, and then it moves on to the next, then it moves on to the next. Uh, what is the before we get into the big for the first mobile blockbuster game? What is the first game you remember in this kind of this gen of touchscreen phones that was like 
whoa, everyone's playing this or everyone's talking about this. Smelly? But we're not allowed to talk about the one that we're going to talk about because that's the <laughs> well, only I one I can think of. <laughs> really? <That's laughs> yeah. a, I'll tell you one that I that I can think of is um, Angry Birds. Dang it. I meant Plants vs. Zombies. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even think about it without saying it. Um, Plants vs. Zombies was the one right before Angry Birds. Yeah. Uh, I can't really think of one before that. No, not that's not that's unique to the iPhone or to touch screens because like I played a whole lot of Bejeweled, but that yeah. was big on PC ten years previous. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah I, and I don't really play those sorts of games. Uh, the iPhone game. I have an Android, but I don't like. I tried playing Madden on the Android, which looks really cool. Uh, shockingly, but it it sucks the controls and everything. It's just it's stupid. It was I don't even know why I played it. But I have never really been into the the mobile gaming on the on the phones. Um, yeah. So I, that's not really my realm. So I, I don't know that I can speak to this too well. But I'll still speak because I'm me. Well, I'll agree. <laughs> I, I, I'm glad you mentioned Plants vs Zombies because that was a pretty big um, a pretty big hit. And I think part of it was it's it's such a departure from the gameplay of anything else that we're that we're doing on consoles and even with like smaller it's like a it's a it's a linear tower defense even more linear than like a lot of tower defenses are yeah yeah it definitely is also i mean i have it on the 360 and it's just better on a touchscreen it's easier yeah it is which you can't say that about a lot of different games so i think that that was a big reason why it was popular on the touchscreen because it have, was have you tried it with connect let's say <laughs> oh, that's a good point. I, I heard it's better with Connect. <laughs> it's better. Kid. They told me their company told me that it was better with Connect. <laughs> it even says it on the box. That's great. Oh, yeah. Now, who named who named this topic uh, the first mobile blockbuster? I believe that was Smelly. What was your reasoning behind that? Why is Angry Birds Space specifically the first mobile blockbuster? Well, a very small uh, reason behind it was because that was. Um, the title of the article that I read on this topic. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. That's just one of the small reasons. This is just a, a plagiaristic reason. No big deal. <laughs> a tiny part. A tiny part of my non-creative uh, version. It, yeah. <laughs> so the, the title of the article is Angry Birds Space Introduces the Age of the Mobile Game Blockbuster. And the article, this is from uh, VentureBeat.com, a, a website that I frequent um, once. And it... Uh, Here's here's sort of some of the numbers that it uses to to back up its claim that this is really the first big gigantic colossal um, mobile launch of a game. Um, it essentially it sold in its first day. Let's see. It sold ten million downloads in three days. This was released last week. Wow! And so. Does it break it up into how many were like iPhones? How many were it does the article doesn't I wonder there that data may be available somewhere else, but what it says is the prices range from ninety nine cents on iOS to six dollars on windows p c um, at a minimum of ten million dollars if if everybody only bought it on iOS and that might be true I don't know who bought this for six bucks on a pc well, I bought it for three on my iPad, yeah, I think I bought it for I think it was only a dollar for me on my uh touchy so hmm. but um but yeah so a minimum of 10 million dollars and really what what the article does to break it down because it starts to compare compare it to hunger games for example which was obviously a colossal movie opening this weekend um it compares it with modern warfare 3 which was the last really gigantic colossal console launch um yeah. Because while we as gamer nerds know that Mass Effect 3 is better and, and uh, Skyrim was better, they weren't as huge commercially at launch as uh, Modern didn't, Warfare 3. Didn't grab the uh, bro set as much. You yeah, know? yeah, that's right. Didn't, didn't catch at the Gamma, Gamma Kai houses the way Modern <laughs> no. Warfare 3 did. No, they're not, they're not like, bro, have you checked out the Solarians? No, that's not... <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude! You just picked up a poo dollar. Don't don't touch my controller. Seriously. Oh God, that's gross. There's a Mormon stories behind the poo dollar. Are you familiar with the story, Yoshi? I think so. It, it's like it's like a vague memory, and I also want to say that whoever it was, I think it was Frawls fans, who wanted to know about my first experience with girls on the show. <laughs> you're you're not getting that. <laughs> We're friends on Twitter and all, but you're not getting that. Wow. But we do we will take a detour from the Angry Birds conversation to have this special edition 
of Mormon stories brought to you by Smelly Pirate Hooker. Right. So the year, in the year of our Lord, 2002. Your Lord? It no. was way before that. It was not 2002. It was 2000. It was before 2000. And are we talking about Ryan Lang? No. Oh. Not that mm-hmm. There's two poo dollar stories. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> Your pass is littered with poo dollars. It is. It is. <laughs> the road to hell is paved with poo dollars. I'm just saying. <laughs> Grab on, you gotta grab onto the iron poo dollar or else you won't make it to the tree of life. I leave a wake of destruction and poo covered dollars in my. In my. <laughs> All right, well, I wanna hear your poo dollar story. <clears throat> okay, this so this is one that you probably haven't heard. I was walking to volleyball practice at school at UCLA, and I believe I, I may have actually lived with Yoshi Fett at the time. No, well, it's possible. Anyway, <clears throat> I'm walking to practice. And um, I look down on the ground. I'm, I'm passing by a sorority or fraternity, excuse me, um, Gamma Theta Nu or some awesome name. And um, <laughs> and I look down on the, on the ground, and lo and behold, a shiny dollar. And um, and so I reach down, and of course I pick it up, and uh, and then notice that on the bottom side of this dollar is covered uh, from head to toe with feces. I'm not sure the, <laughs> the species of the feces, but it was feces. And uh, so, of course, I throw it down and hear the snickers from all these awesome intellectual gentlemen at the, at the Sigma Gamma Chi New Theta house and uh, continue to walk to practice wiping my hand on someone's car. And uh, <laughs> so that's that's funny enough. And I show up to practice and I, and I mention it to uh, a couple of the guys on the team. I'm like, dude, I pick up this dollar and there's freaking poo on it. And none other than Greg Kuhn, another one of our uh, intellectual giants on our team. Yeah. He goes, dude, you fell for the poo dollar, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was just embarrassed that this is actually a thing that, that, that bros knew about, that the poo dollar is something that you do. So, I, you know, I got to admit, I'm a little bit surprised that Angry Birds is still as big as it is. Um, I, the, really, the only reason why I bought it is because well, my five-year-old son is nuts about it, yeah. and we added it as one of the... the um, topics here so i wanted to be able to play it i'm surprised this lasted this long like why hasn't something dethroned it yeah. or here, has something here's my question is that Go ahead, yeah is is okay so angry birds in space like uh, i don't get like why this is, angry birds in space why is this a thing like why is this like the oh my gosh so i'll tell you you want can i tell you yeah like why are you just gonna keep talking it's kind of <laughs> It's kind of like, you know, why, right, Yoshi? It's like, why do they put Battlefield 3 in my Mass Effect? Why do they put space in my Angry Birds? <laughs> it's not the same universe, right? Well, no, it's not. It's not, it's not a question of you know, cross-pollination. The, the intricate, <laughs> intricate world of, of Angry Birds it makes me mad. It, it doesn't make me angry. It makes me confused. Like, I don't understand why this confused is, like, birds. such a huge update that, like, people are, are, you know, in droves buying it. And I think that's the argument, is that this is the first game that didn't, like... Because it seems like most of these games, and I'm a bit ignorant about them, but most of them, like, they have, like, a groundswell of popularity. Like, a few people play them, and then it's passed on, and then it becomes big. And, like, this is big at launch. But why is putting them in space, like, a thing? The, the Angry Birds franchise is built on repetition and, like, minute changes to the angle of your trajectory right? Um, to try to take down these, these towers. And so the original Angry Bird was just about taking down a tower and destroying these little piggies. The second Angry Birds seasons introduced this new mechanic where, uh, what, there were decorations, season, <laughs> seasonal decorations Ooh. on the piggies. So no real change at all, but people bought it because it was like, oh look, there's now it's Easter, and they like re- release new seasons and cute. Yeah. Um, the third Angry Birds Rio introduced these birds <laughs> that you had to set free by breaking their cages. Essentially, the same freaking thing, but reskinning it, and people bought into it. This one, as far as I can tell, and I've played through almost the whole first world. Um, it's actually a new gameplay mechanic where they're in space, and there are planets that you're either launching from or toward. And these planets have this sort of reverse emanation of gravity. There's a gravitational pull on each planet. And so yeah. you have to bend it like Beckham, essentially, around the planet. <laughs> that is the perfect way to describe it. Beckham in space. Bend it like Beckham. Yeah, it's, it's Beckham in space. It could have been that, but it wouldn't have sold as much for some reason. Um, yeah. But so it, it is actually the first real legitimate change in the gameplay mm, okay. mechanics. And it is, and it's uh, pretty 
comprehensive the way it changes how you have to play. And also, I should say they've altered the the mechanics of some of the birds. There's like four or five different birds that you can use, and they do different things. Yeah, and they've changed how they how they work too. So there is new mechanics in this, um, and the graphics just look better. It's they're so appealing and enjoyable just to look at. Um, so it, it is. It's impressive that they've done that. The, the the numbers that I wanted to tell you guys about from this article were, if you break it down to just sheer users and who bought into a product, when Modern Warfare Three was released, um, in the first twenty four hours there were six point five million people that bought the game. Now obviously they made a lot more money or they grossed a lot more money because it was sixty bucks a pop as opposed to yeah. one or two. Um, but 6.5 million, which is in one day lower than the three-day take of Angry Birds of 10 million. Um, Hunger Games opening audience was probably, according to the article, around 15.5 million. And that was arguably the biggest thing in the world last week. Um, and so in comparison to those, this is like a legitimate, gigantic, colossal, huge cultural phenomenon. And, uh, and it's kind of impressive that, it, that, it's, that it's achieved that level. Um, it's hard to. I I see what I I get what you're saying. It's hard to compare. It's like saying, you know, today 320 million Americans drank a glass of water. It's just not as impressive when it only costs a dollar. But it's not impressive that 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 as many people are drinking water as are buying Angry Birds. I mean, this is this is a, a huge, gigantic success for probably a very small company of people that. Came up with a very simple game gameplay. You know, you know how much that stupid game is worth. How much that company is worth. What is it? Is it is it Rovio? Yeah. No. How much is it worth? Yeah, it's over a billion dollars. Right. And so they're they, worth. Tons they could have bought the Dodgers then. They could have bought the Dodgers. They could, they could buy Magic Johnson. They could they could buy and heal his HIV. No, he already did that. He, he already did that by healed. yeah. No, he healed. You can himself. get through anything if Magic made it. Yeah. Yep. Nah, but he is pretty tenacious. <laughs> nah, but he, nah, but his immune system is riddled with injury. <laughs> what I was going to say about the Angry Birds thing, I think the thing that makes it so impressive is that there's no particular audience for it. Like, it's not a, a niche thing where it's like Modern Warfare is for the gamers and, you know, uh, Hunger Games is for the teens mainly you know although a lot of adults like it too and angry birds is for everybody it's very egalitarian and i think that's why it's impressive is it's a video game that so many people are interested in and of all walks of life uh so that's that's what i think makes it special and different um is that it's we're seeing some massive crossover here and and it's in the way that people view video games and this has been a long time coming obviously with things like connect and motion control but this seems to be a, a validation that these things are legitimate so yeah i would i would make the argument that right now draw something is bigger than angry birds i think if you had the numbers if you put the numbers in there i think you would see that that's the case i don't agree i think draw something draw something is mentioned in the article and it says that it took draw something five weeks to get to twenty million downloads. Well, but it's it's like OMG, it's OMG Pop's very first effort. Yeah, I agree. Uh, you, did you hear that um, that Zynga offered them two hundred and twenty million dollars to buy them out? Yeah, uh, that's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. All they man. did all they did was put Pictionary on on Facebook and iPhones. That's but it, but crazy. again, I think that, that, that the, the, for me, the difference is that draw something is clearly very popular with like a subset of the like internet culture, et cetera. Uh, the people that we know well, you know, that are part of the, the whole, uh, you know, gestalt, the whole feeling of this time period. Whereas angry birds seems to reach beyond that, you know, like draw something is really popular. Like I see people tweeting about it and stuff like that, but angry birds is selling, you know, gobs and gobs of copies to everyone and their grandmother. And I don't see that happening as much with draw something. I see like specific types of people. If I look at the draw something people that I have games with right now, my mom, my eight year old niece, my 45-year-old uh, brother-in-law, who doesn't even use Facebook, he sent me a text that said, hey, my username on Draw Something is this, add me. And I was like, whoa, what? 
Hmm. First of all, you need to treat my sister better. Second of all, <laughs> I'm in. Let's play. Yoshi, who who else is on Dog's Dies Draw Something list? I don't I don't know, but I'm not sure how his anecdotal evidence is really even even has a point here. Like I okay, it, so so the people you know use draw something, but like for me, when I've looked at the general populace, it seems like, and it seems like the article bears this out. Not as the well. general populace, the general people that you follow on Twitter. And you're and you're making the same argument argument that you say I shouldn't make. You're making the same argument. No, I'm not, because I'm not I'm not uh, isolating it to people that I specifically know. Like I'm I'm saying that in the the general like gamer kind of nerdy internet sense it seems like draw something is pretty big right now but if you ask the average person whether they know draw something or angry birds what do you think you're going to get more answers that they are familiar with draw something or they're familiar with angry angry birds okay i i I agree that they would the angry birds is the more recognizable name and my 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 answer for the reason why is because it's been around forever it's been around for three years wait so what what were the numbers smelly how many downloads of, of angry birds space 10 million? Angry Birds Space was 10 million in three days. And OMG Pops Draw Something was uh, five weeks to get to 20 million. Yeah. Yeah, well, the, exactly. Angry Birds has been around for three years. It's a more recognizable name. But that's not really changing. That's not the, the, that's, that doesn't change the discussion, though. The discussion is still about which one is more, is more prominent in, in our culture. And I, I think Angry Birds still is, even though draw something. You know, I mean, like you said, it's a very basic concept, um, and it, it feels like one of those things that's going to be a little bit more of a fad than Angry Birds. I think I think Angry Birds has more legs simply because it's more marketable, and and the Angry Birds movie is probably going to be be a huge hit, and the Draw Something movie is going to suck. <laughs> it's gonna be really boring, Bad. you know. And, I, and I'll say this too: the marketing campaign for Angry Birds Space, they did a lot of like NASA tie-ins and stuff. But look it up. There's a picture. They placed a gigantic red Angry Bird catapult on the uh, Seattle Space Needle, and it's one of the coolest things I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, and and my stupid two year old daughter looks at Angry Birds and goes, "Angry Birds!" Like it's like it's a cultural phenomenon in the way that draw something is not yet. And maybe you're right; it's just a matter of time. Dogs die, where everyone will be going, "Oh, look, it's draw something." But I I just don't think they have the same kind of appeal. Well, they're very they are very different games, that's for sure. But I I just have seen I've just seen in my my life to just today uh, at work, someone saw me doing it. And nobody at my work's talking about Angry Birds, but three people today said, "Why haven't you invited me on to draw something?" And yeah. it's like I I feel like because it's free, or even the I mean I guess you can pay a dollar or whatever, but there's no free version of the Angry Birds space for I don't know. Anyway, so here's a here's a bet, guys. Here's a here's a, I don't care if we bet, but I want it, you guys are on two sides of the fence. It, I want to ask in 6 months. <laughs> Thanks Romney. Is what is this? Draw something going to be <laughs> is <laughs> is draw something going to be anywhere near uh the popularity even that it is now. That's the question. Um I surprisingly I'm going to say no, and the reason why I think not is because these asynchronous gameplay types, uh, people get sick of them. What does that mean? Synchronous? Yeah, I don't even know what that means. Nobody uh, knows what it means. <laughs> you don't know it's what asynchronous? No, I don't. You guys are doing word of the week on me. That, ty- that type of game is my turn, and now it's your turn, and you don't have to play together. Ah, Asyn- so it's not it's so, not synchronous. You don't have to play together. It's asynchronous. You syn- don't have to play at the same time. Synchronous. Cool word. Thank you. Thank you. That's that's Yoshi Spet. Yoshi Fett's word of the week. Uh, I just want to put that in my my arnisal. Arnisal? <laughs> Arsenal. <laughs> no. By the way, it is an actual word. Synchronous. I think is a word. Okay, then asynchronous. <laughs> oh, so wait. This whole thing was about a not a real word now. Synchronous. I think it was a. Uh, uh, Okay, whatever. It's 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 old and played. Making fun of. I don't speak regular words right. Why am I going to say? <laughs> no that? results found for synchronous. Synchronous though. Yeah. Okay, asynchronous. Oh, okay. Well, this is not as cool anymore because I already knew the word synchronous. <laughs> All right. Anyway, those type of games, um, you know, uh, words with friends. That ends up feeling like a job where you get onto your. I get onto my iPad 
and I see, oh my gosh, I woke up in the morning and now I have to go and, and do 11 words. Or, you know, Hero Academy is a game that I've already quit. Draw Something is already getting to that point where it's so popular. I have 20 games going and I don't want to go in and do 20 games. It takes like a half an hour, <laughs> you know? I agree. They need to cap it or they're gonna, you're going to get draw fatigue. That You know what? I think that they should. I think it should be, you know... But the hard part about the draw something is that there's no, like, winner. You don't just stop. Yeah. And so if, if they cap it, it's like, well, I can't add you because I'm already filled up. Yeah. Where in, like, a Words with Friends, you can finish a game with someone and then add someone else. Anyway. <sighs> a lot of Angry Birds on this episode. A lot of, syn- a lot of synchronomous, too. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Asynchronomous. Get it right. <laughs> Get it wrong. <laughs> Yosh. Uh, you know, I thought I knew, I learned a new word. I was kind of excited for a moment. Yep. <laughs> well, um, we have time for like one more topic. What do you guys want to talk about? <laughs> if that. I think we should do the Hunger Games. Okay. Yeah. Did, so, did, Yoshi. Yoshi, did you have an announcement to make about the Hunger Games? Oh, yes. Uh, the Hunger Games is a popular book series and now a blockbuster movie there is no video game for the hunger games wow you heard it here first how did this happen especially you know now that i'm reading the book and it's like this is this is perfect for a video game tie-in i i really want to know why this didn't happen it would be the perfect like rpg style um don't you think it would be the perfect like an an, an RPG multi multiplayer type of experience? I think it would. I think it would be cool for like a um, top down two point five D, you know, RPG in that you have like ten points to assign at the beginning, um, just before you rise up out of the ground and have to either run for the woods or charge for the the. What is it called? The Copernicus or something? <laughs> and I think I believe that's correct. Yeah. It's the Nos- it's the Dr- Nostradamus. It's the Nostradamus. Um, but like you, yeah, you choose whether you're going to be big and strong. You you can choose the Valkyrie, the warrior, or the wizard, or the elf. Essentially, <laughs> Katniss needs food. Badly. That's all this is. I never even realized that Hunger Games is just a freaking rip off of Gauntlet. Yes. It's a she's, and she ripper. is the archer. That's why she's so fast. I didn't hear anything you guys said after I said Katniss needs food badly. <laughs> I didn't hear you say that. And I oh, laughed so much. Okay, harder. yeah, I, that's what I thought. I thought I was like, I thought that was pretty funny. That's normally a, I can normally get a laugh out of uh, Smelly for something like that. Foxface is about to die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just don't understand why they didn't make this game. Like, uh, I mean, they made a freaking video game for the movie Bolt. It's like, what? How can you not make a game for Hunger Games? Yeah, because it's dumb Disney. Oh, well, they, they knew they could make you cry though with that. <laughs> There's no guarantee that you'd Look, cry. Look, I'm just Hunger saying Game it's Game. it's a really sweet when Bolt lays down with Miley Cyrus and says, "I will die with you." It's amazing. Just <laughs> telling you guys, there is not a more pure moment in a Disney movie involving My- Miley Cyrus in that moment. That's when that's when Miley uh, thinks that Bolt's dead, and so she. You know, he didn't save any poison for her, and right that part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Romeo and Bolt. Yeah, that's the new yeah. version of Forsooth. it. Forsooth, Forsooth. little doggy. <laughs> yeah. What? Well, um, what are we talking? I don't. Need, what are we talking about? We were talking about why the Hunger Games didn't Hunger have Games. A, and a, a Smelly. Cult. You, you just, you got my, you got everything tingling down there. <laughs> For me, because (laughs) thinking about it, of uh, you get X amount of points that you can assign, and then you have to get in the tube and you go up, and then you have to decide if you're going to go get your stuff or run to the. I love that. That would that is so cool. And I want it to be really fast, like uh, rapid, fast. There's going to be a winner within sixty seconds, and it's going to be round after round. Like I want it to be frantic multiplayer. There are twenty four people in in a in a death match. And it's going to be flashy, and it's going to be fast, and you're going to have to choose really quickly how you assign whatever you win, and and start it over again. Hmm, it, it's that's almost the style of Gears of War multiplayer, original Gears of War multiplayer, right? Uh, but a little bit more frantic. Gears of War multiplayer those those typically didn't last more than ten minutes, right? 
Um, well, even even less than that. One little round, a match would be longer. But and most most of them involve just me sitting there and waiting to <laughs> for the round to end because I'd been killed so quickly, waiting for everyone else to die. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that that would probably happen in this, you know, if if. But uh, but how cool would it be? Because the the AI in the game, and it would not be hard to program this. I know because I program video games a lot. <laughs> We talked to Mantooth before, so we know about yeah. programming. <laughs> I, I knew a guy once. Uh, rest his soul. They they could program in, you know, oh, well, this dude's hanging over in the forest. We're going to throw a wall of fire at him, like two seconds after he decides to wait in the forest. I yeah, mean, that's, yeah. It, it, it's, it's easy to solve the, you know, the Yoshi fets of the world that sit around and, and do nothing because it, that's built into the story. <laughs> you mean the people who are awful at everything and then <laughs> die quickly? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, I would be, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd be out of that thing quick. That's for sure. Man, what, are the, I, what are the name of those mutant um, creatures that attack you that are like, uh, I just read about them. Which? They, they're mutant what nows? Oh, the mutant jacket, the, the yellow yeah, jacket the j- the jackal, oh, the tracker, tracker jackets, tracker jackers. Oh, those things are so amazing. <laughs> See, there could be tracker jacket, and then you can start oh, hallucinating. Oh my goodness! Oh yeah, the whole halluc- Ah, that's amazing. This game is so good. This is the best game I've ever played. Needs yeah. to happen. Where Where are you at, Bioware? <laughs> uh, well, who, who's the studio? It's Nintendo that made WarioWare, right? They need to. This is essentially WarioWare meets. This is a meets, WarioWare kind of style. Meets uh, Gears of War. WarioWare meets Gears of War. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that makes so little sense. Just because it. it's so fast, it's a micro, it's a micro uh, death match, essentially gotcha. at sixty seconds. But do, are we? I'm not convinced that that's the way to go. No, oh, well, that's it's a, you're wrong. Okay, <laughs> that's that's I, primarily why you're not convinced. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I, I could see it a little longer. I, I understand the, the shortness factor. I don't know. Someone make it, then we'll find out if, if I'm wrong. <laughs> Plugle? Get on it, Plugle. Plugle, go for it. <laughs> we'll, we'll shout you out. If you, if you make a, a video game that's really good, we'll shout you out on the next episode. We will mention your name on our but next episode. But you only have one week. <laughs> so you have 60 luck. seconds. Yeah. <laughs> well... <laughs> As tends to happen here uh, on the boom, we don't have time for the other uh, topics, so we got to do shoutouts. Smelly, do you have any? Or shoutouts are hilarious. Um, yeah, there's a couple from from iTunes this week. Um, let's see here. Uh, I guess we have to go back a little ways. Um, but did we read Boom is like a show? Mm, I that don't doesn't think sound so. familiar. Yeah, Boom is like a show. It is what it is. It's from David Rhodes. Um, yeah, that's the last one we didn't read. But he gave us four stars, so actually I take that back. Um, Bush and Ryu Cat gave us five stars. Um, Fecal Ear Matter gave us five oh, stars. That's a bad picture. That's wrong. Um, no, actually, that's not his name. That was the title of his review. It was A No Spam. A- or Anus, ah. Anus Spam. I'm not sure. Anus Pam. Fecal ear matter is what you would get if you tried to pick up a poo dollar and then forgot a few minutes later and started to itch your ear. Oh, this is kind of a cool a cool comment he made. He said, I thought Yoshi was doing a really good Morden impression at one point, but I just hit the two times playback speed on my iPod by accident. <laughs> <laughs> That's and, then, and then he, follows, he gives us a little meme. He says, you guys got booms on booms on booms. Girthy Mesa. Well done. Love it. Girthy Mesa. Corey Norris um, gave us five stars. And said he wants to know more about Smelly's pinball skills. I'm pretty sure he's not being sarcastic, so I'll be sure and address that sometime in the future. I can give you a little preview. He's really good at pinball. <laughs> As someone, I've, I, I've played pinball with a lot of people, and uh, Smelly Pirate is among the top one of those people. <laughs> <laughs> Deserves to be mentioned in the top one. Right, yeah. If you're going to talk about the top one players of pinball, he's number one. Yoshi Fett, yeah. Of the people I know. <laughs> <laughs> played pinball with <laughs> um, Sebastian Hurst gives us five stars and uh, he talks about Indiana Jones for some reason and then Han Solo with a fedora oh yeah he was making fun of Yoshi for shameful universe crossing that Han Solo was an Indiana Jones <laughs> yeah that's a good point I hadn't thought of that excellent excellent point and then Zelda rocks you one um, gave us five stars and uh it says this show is better than cats. I would see it again and again. 
<laughs> so, so that's good. Uh, yeah, thanks, you guys. That was great. And uh, everybody who talks to us on Twitter, thanks. Go to the website and talk on the forums. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Even though I won't talk on the forums because I can't access it from my school computer, so whatever. No, it's like the opposite of knowing Yoshi in real life, being on the forums, where you do all the talking and he just listens. <laughs> and I don't even listen, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, w- I want to just like throw. I was looking at my Twitter feed, and I, that's impossible. I just want to throw a general shout out to everyone who I've had a discussion uh, about Mass Effect Three with over the last two weeks. I have had so many contentious, interesting discussions with people about uh, overall the game, but specifically the ending, as everyone knows, is the big uh, brouhaha, the big bruxum of the game. Um, and uh, <laughs> it, I've had a lot of fun. Uh, debating this whole topic with people and i think we will hopefully next show maybe address this a little bit the the because it seems like it's something that needs to be addressed by a gaming show the whole mass effect 3 ending but yeah but it had to take a back seat to angry birds <laughs> good point that is a much more important game i am with you <laughs> i I, de- I think at some point in this episode i declared angry birds is the most important game of all time so <laughs> that's about right <laughs> M- more important than uh than draw something i think i i declared at least that <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, dog time. You want to out shout anyone? I'll out shout something. Uh, you no, know, I don't really have any. No, you won't. <laughs> also, well, well, specifically, I wanted to shout um, albino platypus because I've been having a lot of interaction with uh, that that fellow. I think lately, I think he's a fellow. Pretty sure. Um, good interactions on Twitter. So shout out. Boom. At the at the very least, he's a mammalian sort yeah. of <laughs> creature. Yeah, you're in the same phylum. It's, yeah, di- it's, 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 it's a platypus, so you know they don't do much. That's a oh. sorry. That's that's a reference. But, yeah, that's good. No, I'll leave it there. Great. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do an f you uh, to me for not tweeting as much as I'd like. That's all. Huh. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do an f you to me for tweeting way too much. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll do an and f you my me tweets for tweeting just enough. <laughs> oh, we are the golden locks of Goldilocks of Twitter. What? Yeah, I'm the one who eats too much porridge. Take that for what you want to take. My it porridge for. is too cold. That is not a metaphor. Dude, no, nothing we said has just made sense. This is awesome. No. We're spiraling, guys. <laughs> All right, Smelly, put us out of our misery, if you would. Or do we have a deedle real quick? We might have a deedle. I mean, aside from Angry Birds being a dollar on. Uh iOS and, and I can uh, give you the definition of bruxism if you care to know it. it. I thought it was bruxism. Oh, bruxism. You're right. I can't even say the word. Why do I even do this anymore? Uh, <laughs> bruxism is the habitual, purposeless clenching of and grinding of the teeth. Oh, es- especially no. during sleep. So, especially during podcasting. Yeah. <laughs> Well, when I first read it, I thought it said purposeful clenching and grinding of the teeth, especially during sleep. And I thought that was interesting that they thought you could purposely <laughs> grind your teeth while you're sleeping. But yeah, bruxism is that. that I, apparently, that's a fancy word for teeth grinding. So cool. I like that word. Sounds cool. That's pretty cool. <laughs> um, do we have a deedly? Not specifically. Um, until the 31st, you can get the Hunger Games series on ebooks for about a dollar a book. Yeah, I saw that. It's not bad. Instead, I went and and torrented the audiobook. Oh, yeah. Well, there's that, too. Now available on uh, (laughs) bitpirate.torrent. What is it called? I actually didn't do that. I'm just trying to get underneath uh, Yoshi's skin. Oh, you thought I was going to have some sort of objection to audiobooks? Yeah, I do. That's lame. Uh, Yeah, that's that's what I was going (laughs) to (laughs) do. No, audiobooks are great. I I actually uh, would recommend anybody who... uh, likes good things to listen to the audiobooks for hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy because they are amazing so oh those books are good that you will the even the the audio versions are even i think arguably better because that the voice acting is amazing but not oh, sorry that was tangential hmm. tangential yes hmm. it's a real <laughs> word i know but it doesn't make me it doesn't make me dislike you any less <laughs> yeah, but I don't think anything could really do that. I need to send you more pictures from the show of me with my 10-game hitting streaks, and then I'll bring us back together as lovers. Yes, I agree. All right, Smelly, take us out. Oh, we should also announce that Anchorman 2 has been announced. 
Oh. And maybe we should commit to continuing to podcast until we are able to use Anchorman 2 quotes to take us out every week. Huh. Can, can we commit until, to that? Well, let's commit to doing it until we've quoted every single line of dialogue in Anchorman 2. I, 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 you know what? Honestly, I wasn't even sure we were committed to doing it for one more week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. All right. We'll do it till it comes out. We'll commit to that. <laughs> We podcast till we die, dog. The Big Red Barrel Boo! Raj says... I did it backwards. No, no, Mr. Dogs Die. Me no clean. Tell him I no can do Friday. Awesome. You and your ears are quite welcome for the podcasting goodness that you just heard. Why not roll on over to BigRedBarrel.com for more podcasts, news, reviews, and videos from the biggest, reddest site on the internet. BigRedBarrel.com